Please, Admiral, we are very much looking forward to your speech. The floor is yours. Give him a big hand. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kate. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. And I'm also thrilled by the fact that I've been invited to say something about the Chinese challenge. I mean, the Russian challenge is something I speak about nearly every day. The Chinese challenge, however, is a bit more distance from Norway. Uh, or as my esteemed colleague said, there's only one country between Norway and China. Uh, it's a fairly large one, though, but still. Uh, what I'll do when it comes to looking at the Chinese challenge in a military perspective, I will be looking a bit at the general rise of the military capability in China, why it is arising, and I will focus at the end on the Arctic region and what is particular in our vicinity. One important aspect of China's rise as a global power is that the simultaneous ongoing modernization of the People's Liberation Army. It is being transformed from a territorial army to a modern joint armed force with increasing power projection capabilities. The party leader and president, Xi Jinping, has consolidated power in his hands. His ambitions on behalf of the emerging superpower <coughs> is reflected in China's increasing <coughs> assertive and self-confident policies and activities. China is to play a central role in the international arena, a country which is treated with respect, a country with considerable influence globally. China's present international internationality is increasingly being felt by us all. In terms of a still fast-growing economy, in terms of its dependent on extensive international trade, and in terms of China's investments abroad. China's ambitions are being pursued and carried out in a coordinated manner, all in accordance with the party's objectives and ambitions. Xi's signature project during the last years, the Belt and Road Initiative, comprises a variety of investment plans and infrastructure projects in a number of countries located in different parts of the world. The Belt and Road Initiative is a key instrument to enhance China's position and influence. And in this context, China's presence internationally is supported by the transformation and the modernization of the People's Liberation Army. In addition to, co in addition to contributing to strengthen China's influence and position both in East and Southeast Asia, the PLO is also looking beyond China's neighborhood, to some extent reflecting China's enhanced global reach. China is in the process of becoming a global power with increased military reach. This may also influence Norway's security and defense interests, both directly <coughs> and indirectly. Looking at China's military build-up, knowing that China's growing presence internationally is part of a broader push for a prominent global role, the transformation of the PLA is followed with interest by everyone, including Norway. China's military expenditure has tripled over the last 15 years. According to some estimates, Defense spending is now approximately 170 billion US dollars and it's growing. The force structure is being modernized through an introduction of advanced platforms and systems. China puts emphasis on introducing new technologies and artificial intelligence allows for capabilities that will contribute to change the basis of modern warfare and also use non-conventional or asymmetric operations. The PLA's ability to project power is steadily being improved. Land-based missile forces have become a fourth armed service, and China is significantly building up its special forces. The PLA Navy is being expanded with astonishing speed, 
and the Air Force is procuring new and modern long-range aircraft. China's aircraft program is in development, and it is believed that China will be moving towards a future nuclear-powered large-capability carrier. The two carriers currently sailing will offer the PLA important training and experiencing in operating carrier strike groups. The carriers are supported by a large number of increasingly capable multi-role frigates and destroyers. In addition, several strategic support ships provide the endurance, the sustainability and ensure the longer reach. The first type of the 75 landing helicopter dock was launched in September last year. When it is outfitted, the vessel will augment the already existing expeditionary capability in the Type 71 landing platform dock. Announced plans for additional units of both classes point to a significantly increased capability for overseas operations. However, there is a reason to be prudent in assessing the PLA's military capabilities. The rapid expansion and transformation may create substantial challenges as the Chinese introduce a high number of new platforms which need to be interact and perform efficiently in order to frame a joint operational force. To ensure appropriate cooperation and coordination across the services, making this work will require time. Moreover, the lack of combat experience constitutes also a drawback. Compared to the United States and Russia's armed forces or units, China has some distance to go in order to catch up. In this context, the military cooperation we now are seeing with Russia might enhance the PLA's operational skills and abilities in the future. In addition to safeguarding China's sovereignty and national unity, the PLA has been tasked to ensure strategic <coughs> deterrence, safeguard China's interests in space and cyberspace, and participate in international security cooperation. The modernization of the PLA should be, she should be seen in the relation to Taiwan's role in China's policy. China is strengthening its military position on the doorstep of the South China Sea and the East China Sea. In parallel, these capabilities that China develops are capabilities for blue water operations and over-the-horizon power projection. The United States has traditionally been the dominating military power in China's vicinity. Key lines of transportation are passing through the South China Sea and the East China Sea to various Chinese ports as well as South <laughs> Korea and Japan. The US has bilateral alliances with Japan, South Korea and Australia with subsequent treaty obligations in the area. China considers the US presence in East Asia to be unwelcome and wants to weaken it. Simultaneously, Beijing wants to strengthen its own position in neighboring international waters. In addition, as we all probably know, oil and gas resources in the South China Sea are a cause of dispute in that region. The surrounding countries have competing claims to the disputed islands, reefs or objects. In recent years, China has increased its effort to reclaim land in the South China Sea by creating new islands. China has constructed ports, military installations and airstrips on the Paracel and the Spratly Islands. The Permanent Court of Arbitrage in The Hague has ruled against these actions as a breach of the UN Convention on the Law of the Seas. But China refuses to accept their authority. Adding to this picture, 
China has increasingly interfered with the freedom of navigation, <coughs> warning military and commercial shipping away from the artificial islands in the area. China has been using its Coast Guard vessels, maritime militia, to contribute to build a permanent presence and influence in this region without risking a military confrontation with other nations. The United, on the, the United States, on the other hand, has responded by, regulating, uh, by regularly conducting freedom of navigation operations in these areas. China's quest for expanding influence globally and her growing demand for natural resources has also led to the build-up of a large merchant and naval fleet. China's merchant fleet is considered a strategic asset. Raw materials and finished products are primarily transported by sea, and the sea lines of communication between China and the West are vulnerable with several critical choke points. China's strategy is to strengthen her influence, her presence and ability to protect these sea lines of communication. The sea lines through the Indian Ocean link China to the Middle East, including the Straits of Hormuz, East Africa and through the Suez Canal to Europe. As a result of this, China has established a regular naval presence in the Indian Ocean, also with nuclear submarines. <coughs> India is increasingly concerned by China's growing influence in the region and in cooperation with Japan, they are working at to contain some of China's weight in the region. Looking to the high north, so far China's military footprint in the high north is non-existing. China is however keenly interested in the Arctic and has expected express preferences for taking part in activities related to natural resources, oceanography, research and transportation. Ch the Arctic is included in the Belt and Road Initiative. The Chinese are envisaging a creating a polar Silk Road and the party considers China as a near Arctic state. China has observed status China obtained an observer status in the Arctic Council in 2013 and in 2018 China published its first Arctic policy white paper and finally the polar regions are defined as areas of national security interest in China's current national security law. Regardless of the rising Chinese Arctic interest Arctic is hardly on the top of China's agenda. The extent to which China will engage in the Arctic is subject to a number of factors, one being China's overall relationship with Russia. Russia has its own ambition in the Arctic and is developing its positions along the Northeast Passage. Russia is probably not too keen on allowing China in as a key Arctic player. However, Russia's overall relationship with China may impact on how Russia allows China into the region. The two countries are sharing objectives of weakening the US position and influence internationally. Russia is also interested in teaming up closer with an increasingly powerful China. Coordination and cooperation between the two countries are mutually beneficial. To pursue some of its ambitions in the Arctic, Russia may rely on Chinese investments. <laughs> Moreover, President Putin may find it politically appropriate or necessary to allow Chinese participation in the activity in the high north to safeguard further development in the close relationship with Xi, a relationship which is supporting Russia as a great power. China describes its relationships to Russia as a strategic partnership and coordination for a new era. On a general note, China and Russia are developing their military operations and cooperation, including through mutual training and exercises 
which we have seen in the area between South Korea and Japan. The possibility of closer bilateral activity in the north has the potential of affecting Norway's security and defense interests. A second factor that will influence China's future presence in the Arctic is the extent to which Arctic countries allow China to invest and operate on territories within their respective sovereignty. Most of the Arctic is regulated and is subject to the Arctic country's own jurisdiction. <coughs> if Beijing envisages resource extraction, trading routes or even strategic locations for Chinese space activities, it will need support facilities, closer cooperation with and understanding of the Arctic states. We know that the United States is increasingly aware of China's ambitions in the Arctic and is attempting to limit China's Arctic footprint. There is a growing risk that the Chinese and Russian interests will converge in the North, which may then affect US policy and activity in the region. If China is further involved in activities related to trade, infrastructure, transport and natural resources, we cannot rule out that such a presence may be followed by an emerging military <coughs> presence in the future. China now has two ice-breaking capable researchers for polar regions and it has started a project to develop new types of icebreakers for Arctic operations. The investment underlines the effort to increase future engage engagement in polar regions. It is in Norway's interest to keep the Arctic as an area of low tension and regional cooperation. As Russia has strengthened its presence in the Arctic, the China is underlying its interest in the region as part of its global drive. These developments may carry security and defense-related consequences and risk. Consequently, Norway will follow the development in our neighborhood very closely. Norway oversees a large economic zone with significant resources and rely on international agreements and arrangements which regulate and protect the natural resources in the oceans and on the continental shelf. Let me conclude by saying that the international strategic landscape is changing. The <coughs> emergence of China as a key actor is a major contributor to this change. Part of the picture is Chinese growth and expansion, expanding presence into distant regions. The ambition of being a global power implies global presence, which also includes Norway's part of the world. Norway is affected by China's rise, also in the security and deterrence area, and we need to learn more and decide how to respond to this development. China's military build-up is unprecedented. The transformation of the PLA challenges US interests both in Asia and beyond. Approximately 70% of the world's total defense expenditure are now being spent by countries around the Pacific Rim. China's growth in military capability contributes to a new arms and technology competition, in particular with the US, which may affect the global stability. The potential for closer Chinese-Russian cooperation and coordination, in particular in the high north, may affect our security. The US is increasingly focused on China. In accordance with its national defense strategy, the, United, the US resources and attentions are now being drawn towards Asia. The US is also an Atlantic and a Pacific power, and the balance between the two will affect US policy and the use of American power. This will have impact on the North Atlantic, Europe, and Norwegian security and defense. We do not yet know how or to what extent. 
NATO Secretary General, General <coughs> Jens Stoltenberg has initiated a process within NATO whereby the alliance is assessing what effects China's international role may have on NATO. As Stoltenberg has stated, allies need to know more about this great new power, about its ambitions, capabilities and behavior. With the world's second largest military force, China is challenging traditional, well-established notions. We need to adjust our thinking and our plans in accordance with these new realities. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Admiral. Uh, and I'm very happy also uh, that you have uh, time uh, to spend the next two hours together with us. So you will also take part in the panel.